Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Abhas, and with me here is Team 4100 Darlington Robotics from Rome, Georgia. They were recently the finalist Alliance captain and Inspire Award second place recipient at the Georgia State Championship, earning them a ticket to Houston where they'll compete later in April. They have an absolutely fantastic robot and they've built a few others this season, so I'm really excited to jump into this team coming up on Behind the Box. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Okay guys, so the first question I have for you is regards to the fact that you guys have built multiple robots this season, you know, I think that's something teams always struggle with is deciding whether or not to rebuild uh, throughout the season. So why don't you walk me through the decision making behind that and if it's something you'd recommend to other teams. Um, so for us, I'd say that our first robot we build is kind of like a prototype of its own. And so basically we see all the things that go wrong in matches and um, when we go against other teams. And then we put that into our second robot, which we build later on. And that's something which we do from growth from our first robot. I see. And so, yeah, as far as like a timeline perspective goes, do you like, is the first robot targeted like specifically for your first competition and then your second robot for the later ones? Uh, and like, when are those competitions? Uh, we basically are for our first robot is uh, what we use to set up a good baseline for our region for uh, tiebreaker points. And we typically break out our second robot around December or a little bit earlier if we are, if we are feel confident that it can work at a meet, yeah. but mainly due to our region structure and how our qualification matches work in eliminations. Yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. So now jumping into the robot you guys have here today, uh, I mean, the first thing I have to start with are the side plates, just like, wow, you know, how, how do you do that? Walk us through that. I'm sure a ton of teams out there would really like to have side plates that look like that. Uh, that would be, we ended up getting some paint and uh, paint. And so first off, we put uh, just splash it on and then put a base lay, uh, of just um, purple, gray on it, just splash it on. And then after that, we put, uh, since it's a Lexan piece and a see-through, we put a white, uh, then put a white coat on the back. And since uh, the paint is uh, beneath the white, it just pops a lot. Yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. That's that's really awesome. So now getting into your guys' intake, there's definitely a lot going on there. You and I see you have some sort of extending mechanism as well as the boot wheels, I believe. So why don't we start with like the first level of the intake and then we can talk about all the additions uh, after. Okay, so starting off, uh, the main part of this design is our one intake. So it's an easy way wow. to quickly pick up pixels and lead them to our conveyor. But this extension here, uh, allows a safe way to take off pixels from the white pixel stack during autonomous. And if you look closely, uh, these small little pieces here are the main designers, the main mechanism that actually pulls one pixel in after another. And this, this acrylic piece here helps just keep the pixels aligned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now talking about the, the boot wheels and like the active portion of your intake first, how has that changed throughout the season? Uh, would you say like, are there any major iterations you made to it that just really improved its effectiveness? Uh, well, we originally we had uh, simple, it was on our first robot. It was simple, go build a wheels that were, or not go build a wheels, uh, uh, rev wheels that mm -hmm. were, and then we switched to go, uh, some go build a wheels that worked really great. And we've, uh, we chose an active intake over a uh, claw because uh, after autonomous, when you only have one pixel or if pixels fall off the board, it's a lot harder to pick up uh, those pixels with uh, uh, basically a 
grabbing. Well, yeah, no, that, that makes yeah. a ton of sense. So, and you know, we actually here, I'm gonna show, I know you like looking at the bottom of robots, but uh, basically, so for our robot, uh, we have a Lexan piece that with a heat gun we folded, and then we have a, a thin one that is able to be flexible, so it has give to it. So instead of using rollers at the bottom of our ramp, we're able to just have a very thin, flexible uh, Lexan piece that mm -hmm. It makes it really easily to pick up uh, the pixels, which has really improved uh, our speed we can take up. Yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense. And so while we're, uh, you know, already down there, I think I saw some sort of conveyor mechanism, I want to say, or something that had like a bunch of dots going along it. What uh, exactly is that? Uh, so these dots are, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, furniture, like and furniture to keep them from uh, furniture crashing up the floor. Okay. People put those rubber things on the bottom. We put those on our conveyor belt and taking advantage of the indentions on pixels, we're able to use uh, those to take off, uh, or basically um, take the pickles from the bottom of our, and take up to the bucket, which is down here in the back. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we can show visual demonstration, uh, but it is, uh, it's basically just a simple way where we can change uh transfer the pixels from the intake to the bucket without uh having to take time uh away or worry about them getting caught or missing because yeah. some teams you, that use a grabbing mechanism they have a transfer uh like almost passing them between uh two different claws uh that can lead to pixels getting caught inside the robot which we do not want to happen mm -hmm. so since it's a closed system between the entrance and exit pixels won't get caught in there yeah and so you know i i gotta say i'm really impressed with the packaging of your robot you know i think you have really put all of the motors together very compactly you're not afraid to put them at different angles you know it's not like all of them are just going straight or horizontal or anything like that so as far as the gear train and powertrain for your intake goes what does that look like is your transfer like your conveyor and all of your boot wheels powered by the same motor or do you have like a couple different motors and servos going on there um, so our active intake is controlled by a go build a 1150 RPM motor mm -hmm. and our conveyor belt is just a simple rec, uh, rev hex motor. I see. I see. No, that, that makes a ton of sense. So now going on to your guys' deposit, you know, once you transfer the pixels through the conveyor into there, what does the rest of your deposit look like? Let's talk about that. So for our bucket design, the pixels fall into here. Mm -hmm. And we have a simple uh, slide mechanism, go battle slides, and it allows us to raise as high as the third set line. Uh, we can reach the top. And then the top, of course. Yeah. And then as the pixels drop in, these two servos here help raise the bucket higher and higher. And if you notice, the bucket's only attached by two small screws, mm -hmm. which will dangle like this. So that way, when we push it against the tilted backboard it, it will conform against it perfectly yeah and so you know that that's really interesting and with that have you guys had any issues with the transfer you know have you seen that you need to have some sort of mechanism to lock the bucket angle in place when you come down uh so that you always transfer consistently or has that really not been an issue for you guys uh that has not been as much of the issue mm -hmm. honestly the issue we've had this season is our field being different from the competition fields. And, uh, you, you know, they give the, at first, there can be one inch of error mm -hmm. uh, to all the pieces. And so that leads the backdrops have not been the same at every meet. And so with that, that's one of the biggest reasons we led to having a bucket that's able to change the angle. Uh, we do not, we kind of have a piece in the back that makes, Sure that it is uh, the bucket is vertically to receive the pixels. Mm -hmm. However, it's not really been something we've had to worry about or yeah. have problems with. No, that that makes a ton of sense. And so now, I guess going on to your guys's hang mechanism, I uh, can't quite make it out right from here. So, are you guys hanging based off of your, uh, you know, deposit slides, or is it a different mechanism? Uh, same deposit slides. We have two L pattern uh, brackets that uh, we use just to simply push up and. Uh, when the robot that has enough battery, it's always able to pull up. And even if we have lost a good amount of battery throughout the match, uh, we're still we're able to actually take advantage of our 
uh, torch server we have here with the extension back and give us a little bit extra of a push to get up. Okay, but, wow, yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Great. And so now I guess my last question for you guys is, you know, looking ahead to April, we have about six, uh, six or seven weeks before Worlds, right? Uh, what is the game plan going into there? You know, are you guys going to build another robot or kind of just make improvements to this one? What's it looking like? Um, I believe we're going to stick with the same robot, but mm -hmm. we're going to make some mechanical improvements. And also we're working on um, higher scoring autos. Um, right now, specific specifically, we're doing a 2.5. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's something that we use with some new sensors that we put on. And as you can see um, right here, they're um, cased in by purple 3D printed cases. Mm -hmm. Those are actually Maxbotics MD1242 um, ultrasonic sensors. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mechanically, we're going to change the bucket to allow for a us to place at an angle so we don't have to be perpendicular to the backdrop, which mm -hmm. Uh, like technical difficulties I was on this show earlier, yeah. they ended up having, they're able to not have to be exactly per, uh, perpendicular to the backdrop of the place. We're going to be doing the same thing and we'll also alter the expansion to take off the stack during autonomous a little bit to give us a little bit extra time because it takes about a second and a half to take from there now. Mm -hmm. We'll just keep that time a little bit making it. So we'll have uh, more time for possible high scoring products. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You know, you guys always build fantastic robots. I'm really excited to see you guys competing in Houston and, you know, bring out your amazing autonomous and tell you up programs, just everything that made you guys rank so highly at the Georgia State Championship. So again, reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abhas and this is Team 4100, Darlington Robotics. Thank you very much. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.